I can honestly tell you guys that I've no, not had any experience in this sort of a field when it comes to buying games or newly fresh made games on release as a matter of fact. In fact the closest game I actually bought, if I can vaguely remember, of all the games I've purchased, the games I... S me. Like, not, not what someone's got for me. I've purchased. I'm going to say it's got to be 007, uh, Everything or Nothing for the PlayStation 2. That was the closest game I actually got to the release. And while I'm not a big fan of actually getting something on release, because I don't believe in paying massive amount of money for a certain game, uh, I'm just not a strong believer in that whatsoever. If you've got the dosh and the mosh, fine. Even if I still had that, I just don't go along with it. So many people actually buy games on release. I'm wondering what would happen to the game developers if everybody waited a week or just a little amount of time before anyone bought anything on release. You know, I wonder if they would be wetting their pants and wondering, no, 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 this game's bad, it's got bad sales and whatnot, and trying to flow that higher record up and down of the charts of having a good release launch title. But in fact, I've got a little bit of a boring story to tell you. One time when I was living in Liverpool, right, up north, and I was with my mate, uh, good old Lee, we, you know, we didn't realise there was, um, well, we knew there was going to be two new games being brought up, which was Black Ops 2 and FIFA 13. So, after that wonderful night out, we you know, went for a couple of cans, uh, disco and a uh, wonderful quiz, that was a really good, good night that was as well. We was looking at game... Game. It was Game Station back then, but they're closing down in England, unfortunately. Uh, now, Game. So, a big, massive crowd it was like wondering, is that a gang? Right, let's detour, let's go around. There's only two of us, and a lot of them, we didn't want any trouble, so we just took a detour. But out of curiosity, I said, let's go back to Game and see if that crowd is still there, you know, if they're a massive gang. But little did we know that it was actually a line, and it was a massive line. Uh, talking about 300 people at minimum. Uh, this was around about half 11. Alright, so this is before 12 o'clock. Oh, really? Mathematics scientist there. Um, so, when me and my mate Lee went over there and asked, Oh, what game is being brought up? Through my mind, I was thinking, is it a, an action-adventure? Is it a puzzler? Is it something like, you know, uh, Portal? Is it an awesome, awesome game that's being brought out? Something unique? Then it was FIFA 13. I was like... Oh. FIFA 13. Right. I mean, you know, in England, you know, we the British, you know, they're really fond of football. I'm really passionate about football, you know. Uh, favourite European club here. Not the actual team I support, they're just my favourite European Spanish team, Barcelona. So, I thought, yeah, you know, you know, everyone likes football games every now and again. Well, not everyone, but the majority of people who are into sport games. I thought, yeah, okay, you know, we're passionate about football games, that's fine. But then, when my, my mates brought that game, they... They said it was a waste of money. They preferred FIFA 12. And I was like, why on earth did you pay full price for it then? Why don't you just wait a little while? You know, that's what I was going through my mind. So I was thinking, why the heck would you want to pay at least 50 or 60 quid for a football game that you're probably just going to take back the week after? That's another thing with the prices as well. These video game developers and companies get on my nerves. Can't they show at least a little bit of love and charity towards their consumers? They think, okay, everyone that's into this certain genre of games... They buy it year after year. Repetitive first person shooters fall into that category. And okay, we're gonna do something nice. We're gonna take 30% off the price, add a one or two DLC things in there, and do you know how much praise you'll get the fur, you stupid video game companies out there? Do my head in some of you. So basically, I never buy a game on release because I don't really believe in paying a massive amount of price for a certain game. What, 60 quid, 50 quid? Some of it's 70 as well. And to top it off, to put the blinking cherry on the cake here on the wonderful Belgian bun, all right, the DLC comes after as well. You always get this added stuff that you have to pay extra for. I'm like, forget it. No, 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 no. I remember back in the days when, like, you paid, you got a lot for your payment, so to speak. Like Marvel vs. Capcom, that game, you bought one game, no DLC, a lot of fighting characters. A lot of stuff, right? All in one disc, there you go, one price. No DLC, none of that trash. So, um, some of my family members actually bought me games on release, like Shenmue and Resident Evil 2 for the Dreamcast, and other games for the N64 and whatnot. Beautiful. Wonderful games, just unbeatable, basically. And I'm like, okay... Hmm, fair loose. 
But I'm wondering why people actually purchase games on release all the time. Is it to keep up to date? You know, is it to get your name on a scoreboard first? Is it to make YouTube videos of them quick? So, you know, to get popularized? I don't know. What is the big obsession of purchasing games on release? I just, I'm not a believer in paying a massive amount of prices for one game, especially when there's DLC added now. Creating money grabbing mugs and all that jazz. So I never will actually purchase a game on release unless I'm really a big massive fan of the franchise. If it's something that's not been created in a long time, like Shenmue 3 and Star Wars Battlefront, something like that, I'll definitely get it on purchase. Uh, on release date, sorry. But I won't buy any DLC for it. So that's my question to you guys. I mean, do you, do you, what do you think the big obsession is with buying video games on release? I can understand the need for certain games to be up to date with, but when it's a game that's made on a yearly basis, what's the big hype with all that? I don't see any like logical perception behind that. But then again, to each his own, you know, you can spend money on all of it if you want. <laughs> I don't care. You want money? Do what you want with it. So I'm Dr. V, the Retroholic, and may retro games live on.